Good afternoon. In this video, I will continue discussing high-speed optical memory. This is follow-up to my series of three YouTube videos on all optical magnetization switching and another three YouTube videos on spin photon memory. The links to those videos you can find below this video. Today, my focus will be on the primary obstacle preventing the fabrication and commercialization of such memory. I will explain the key challenge that must be addressed to transform this memory concept into a viable and competitive reality. The fundamental operational principle of high-speed optical memory are straightforward. Data is stored in the memory by means of two opposite spin directions, a technique commonly employed in hard disks, camera and recording tapes. Data is recorded to the spin direction using socially polarized light, a mechanism recognized for its remarkable speed. The spin of the photon is converted into the spin of the electron, facilitating the recording of data bit. In this recording method, the data and clock pulses are combined to form a circular polarized pulse, which excites spin. A circularly polarized optical pulse excites the spin, and a linearly polarized optical pulse does not excite the spin. A specific data pulse can be selected out from a series of data pulses by employing a distinct delay of the clock pulse. For instance, at this particular delay, only the second pulse is circularly polarized. Consequently, only the data encoded in this pulse is recorded into the memory cell. The remaining data pulses retain the linear polarization and, therefore, do not affect the recording process. As a result, each individual pulse within a denser package can be recorded into its dedicated memory cell. As I illustrated earlier, this method enables the effective recording of data packages as dense as several terabits per second. So, what is the problem with memory fabrication? The problem lies in efficiency of the spin conversion from photon to electron. One may assume that the efficiency is 100% and each spin of photon is converted into the spin of an electron. Or even 200% because, in fact, each photon creates two electron spins when the ground state is occupied by two electrons with opposite spins resulting in a total spin of zero the photon reverses the spin of one of the electrons, which is initially opposite to the photon spin, to align the spin along the photon spin. The spin of remaining electron, which is initially along the spin of the photon, is unaffected. Consequently, the spin of two electrons become parallel to the spin of the photon. That is the primary reason why the spin of photon creates two electron spins. One might anticipate an exceptionally efficient spin conversion of 100% or even 200%. However, effective photon to spin conversion is quite rare. The underlying reason for this inefficiency is the presence of optical momentum. In addition to spin, an electron may possess its orbital momentum, and the spin of photon can be channeled into either the electron spin of or its orbital momentum, or potentially into both. There are two dis distinct routes through which a photon, ca photon spin can be absorbed by a solid, either to electron spin or to the orbital momentum. To achieve effective photon to spin conversion, it is necessary to enhance the pathway for converting the photon spin into the electron spin, while simultaneously suppressing the conversion into an orbital momentum. So how can the conversion into the orbital momentum be effectively suppressed? In a solid, two types of electrons exist, quenched and unquenched. Quenching refers to whether an electron possesses orbital momentum or not. A typical example of quenched electrons is a localized electron, which is approximately the size of atomic orbital. On the other hand, 
An example of unquenched electrons is a conduction or bent electron, which is considerably larger in size. For quenched localized electrons, the entire spin of the photon is transformed into the electron spin, making the photon to spin conversion highly effective in this case. Conversely, with unquenched conduction electrons, a portion of the photon spin is inevitably converted into the orbital momentum. As a result, the conversion to electron spin is less effective in this case. Why are localized electrons quenched while conduction electrons remain unquenched? The quenching is directly linked to the special distribution of the electron's orbital wave function. The existence of orbital momentum implies that the orientation of orbital momentum can change over time, thereby causing corresponding alternation in the electron orbital distribution. For example, when exposed to a magnetic field, the orbital momentum undergoes precession, leading to a precession of the electron or orbital distribution, as illustrated here for elliptical and P-like distribution. In order for an electron to be unquenched and possess an orbital momentum, the electron distribution must be capable of changing over time. Localized electrons form bonds with neighboring orbitals, as depicted here, and these bonds are fixed in direction to the neighboring atom. Any change in this direction would alter the bonding energy. This is why localized electrons are quenched and do not have an orbital momentum. In contrast, the length of conduction electrons is over thousands or even millions of atomic distances. They do not participate in direct bonding between neighboring atoms. Instead, they contribute to the metallic bonding. Con consequently, the orbital distribution of conduction electrons can change direction over time without affecting the bonding. This is why conduction electrons remain unquenched. For instance, in direct, direct band semiconductor, the valence band is divided into heavy hole, light hole and spin-off bands. This division is a result of the, the non-zero orbital momentum of electrons within the valence band. For additional details, facts and properties of quenched and unquenched electrons, you can visit this my webpage. The link to the webpage is provided below this video. One can assume that unquenched localized electrons are ideal for photon to spin conversion because in this case the photon spin is fully converted into the electron spin. However, there is another challenge to consider. Localized electrons ex exhibit very weak interaction with photons. This presents a dilemma. While photon to spin conversion is efficient for localized electrons, they hardly absorb light, resulting in overall poor conversion rate. On the other hand, conduction electrons absorb light effectively, but the photon-to-spin conversion efficiency is poor. This once again leads to unsatisfactory weak overall conversion rate. Why does a photon interact effectively with conduction electrons, or generally with band electrons, but almost not with localized electrons. The reason lies in the discrepancy in size. In the realm of quantum mechanics, two objects interact effectively when they share approximately the same size. The size of photon closely matches that of conduction electron, which is why photons are effectively absorbed by conduction electrons. In contrast, a substantial size difference exists between a photon and a localized electron. This is the reason why light, light only weakly interacts with localized electrons. 
So how can the problem of poor efficiency of spin conversion from a photon to an electron be resolved? There are two potential solutions. Solution one is to make conduction of bent electrons quenched. Solution two is to increase the efficiency of light absorption by the localized electrons. Also, this solution may appear straightforward. The problem remains unresolved to date. However, there are promising directions towards finding a viable solution. Enhancing the efficiency of photon to spin conversion might be achievable by utilizing a material with very specific properties. So what are the critical attributes of such a magic material for effective photon to spin conversion? The critical property lies in fact that the material's optical transition should remain unaffected by the orbital momentum. It means that the difference between the orbital momentum of ground electron states and optically excited electron state should be nearly equal. Ideally, the orbital momentum should be the same for both states. This property is rare in, in material, but it can be designed or engineered. There are several possibilities for a material to have these specific and uni unique optical transitions. The sim simplest case is when neither ground state nor excited state have any orbital momentum. Quantum wells, quantum dots and surface states are very effective for quenching of orbital momentum. All this type of electron confinement make a conduction electron similar to a localized electron and as a result quenching its orbital momentum. Additional possibility is to make a material in which the ground and excited states belong to the same band. That means that the ground and excited states for an optical transition have the same orbital momentum and therefore the spin of photon is fully transformed into the spin of the electron. Such optical transition is called the interband transition and has been used in quantum cascade lasers. This technology is well known and is already commercialized. I should admit that the methods and technologies which allow quenching the orbital momentum of the conduction electrons are not yet are not yet well developed and I hope more research will be done in this direction.